It's that time again, YouTube. The time when we will paint some creepy creature from Castle Ravenloft, the cooperative board game. Um, you can see this time I've chosen, this is a ghoul. Uh, this is what he looks like primed in black. I know it's kind of hard to see in this light, so I took the liberty of sort of doing a white dry brush over one of them. So you can sort of see the detail in this model, this mini, as opposed to the uh, wolf and spider that we've already done. You can see just right, right off the bat that he's got a lot more going on. Um, the spider and wolf were just furry, featureless, really, with... Uh, with eyes really the only thing different this guy actually has a variety of textures on him and he's gonna have what I see about three different color groups here you can see he's actually got some um, sort of wrap uh, bandagey kind of thing going on that'll probably be in a white gray color he's got some kind of loin wrap that will probably be in kind of an off orange brown type color and then of course his skin which I'm going to do sort of a the slate green color that I was using on my Crix army initially and you can see he's chewing on uh, some severed something a hand looks tasty and uh, the blood he's gonna have blood there will be blood and uh, these are the colors I've chosen for his uh, kind of different color areas. Persimmon and flesh tone I think will go together to make our sort of uh, kind of off orange brown type for his clothing. Uh, of course I've got light buttermilk is the name of this off white color for his, well we'll mix that with everything that needs to be pale and the slate green for his flesh. We've got our Citadel Nuln Oil to uh, kind of fill in the cracks and make his shadows. And of course this has that oily finish so he will look a bit slimy. Uh, this same Ethereum Blue that we've been using uh, from Citadel, it's a dry paint. We'll use that to um, highlight especially his skin to give it kind of a blue dead looking tone. And this is Tester's Red Gloss, um, which this is the only tester's paint that I've used with any success because it's glossy red it comes out wet looking and we're going to use that for uh, some blood so without further ado let us begin um, the way I kind of divide up what I'm going to base coat first is basically you want to look at what the bottom layer is so if I'm looking at this model I see that whatever I paint, uh, let's see, if I paint his bandages first, then when I go to this exposed flesh that's underneath, it's going to be a good chance that I'm going to get that around where I've already painted and I'll have to go back and touch it up, and that's just a pain in the butt. Same as if I start with this loincloth, when I'm trying to brush under here, you see, there's a good chance that I'm going to get up on there and have to go back and touch it up pain in the butt. So the very bottom layer, the lowest layer, is going to be, I think, uh, his trousers. Okay, and then we'll do his loin cloth and his skin actually we will do after that just because this is going to be harder. Um, and I'm fairly certain that there will be a bit of trial and error. We're going to have to go back and and touch up some stuff even though it's a pain in the butt but let's get started what did I say first his pants his pants why is he even wearing pants is he wearing pants and a loincloth school doesn't make any sense well whatever pants first I said we're gonna use this uh, persimmon kind of an orange color I'll put it over here where it's been before. Just about one drop. And what they call flesh tone. 
which I've actually got a glob already poured right here. So we're going to use that. Um, to do the undercoat, this time I'm going to use this number two brush, which is, see here's the one I was using on the other guys. Oh, I'm sorry, no, this is the one I was using. Before I was using a number four brush, which you can see is broader. So with something like this, it's going to be easier to get down into uh, the cracks. And since I don't want it all one color, it's just going to be easier to keep it clean. I'm going to come over here. To the, oops. I'm going to come over here to the palette. Get a little bit of that brown, a little bit of that persimmon. And we're just going to mix it up over here. Make sort of a non color. Go. And with, oh no. Maybe should have painted his knee skin there first. Yeah, this whole area is going to take several layers, I think. And uh, I know I haven't been really teaching this so far, this video, but whatever plan you make, I mean, you've got to kind of have an open mind when you go into actually painting. Oops. Because you're always going to run into, especially with more complex models like this, you're going to run into problems. You're going to see where you can't paint something without getting it all over something else. And that's okay. Uh, another good thing about models like this, where there are different colors of base coats, is that you can do one base coat and then move to a different part of the model while that dries. So you're kind of doing all your base coats simultaneously. And I keep tapping the camera with the paintbrush. I hope that's not too loud on the playback. Okay. So, basically, the first um, base coat is done on his pants. And you can see we got a little zealous here. Up. Sorry, I'll try to keep it in view for you. And I'm going to try not to worry too, too much about getting it perfect because this is just the first base coat and he's a pretty sloppy looking guy anyway so if any sloppiness kind of goes into the model I think it will look more natural right at least that's what I tell myself I don't know how are we looking for time I'm at nine minutes already um no worries we're going to press on for his skin, as indicated. I don't need white. We're going to use this slate green. I love this color. Absolutely love this color. I was using it on my Crix Army. I might add a smidge of this flesh tone. I might add a generous smidge of the flesh tone. There it goes again. No worry. 
series. We're going to start filling him in. Just like this. I've got a dog over here looking at me. I think she's about to ask to go outside. And there she goes, you hear that? What do you want? Boy. Well, I think you get the picture for now on the base coat. Um, on the loincloth here, I'm just going to use, uh, what did I say? I don't know. Did I plan for the loincloth? Hmm. I think the loincloth should be the same color as his pants. Right, and we'll let them run together, and that'll just make it really easy. And if we don't like it when we're done, we can just go over the loincloth in a slightly different color. Okay, so I'm going to finish up this, and when you see us again, we'll have his loincloth and his skin all with a base coat, and my dog will have gone outside, and she will be happy again. Till then, YouTube, learn something, have fun.